When you learned about filters, whether analog or digital, you probably heard about the minus 20 dB per decade roll-off. You also probably learned about it in school at some point, but if you're like me, you totally remember every detail of every lesson you ever had. Womp womp. Let's talk about what it means to have a minus 20 dB per decade or a minus 6 dB per octave roll-off and where it comes from. Let's also talk about the phase response of a filter and how we get the minus 45 degrees per decade estimation. We'll start with the classic RC low-pass filter. First, let's find the transfer function, or the output voltage of the circuit divided by the input voltage. The fancy way of saying, what do I get when I put something in? This resistor and capacitor act as a voltage divider. If this capacitor was a resistor, we'd have R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times Vn. Instead of the impedance of resistor 2, we have the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 divided by S times C. So our transfer function looks like this. No need to be alarmed, we've just slipped into the frequency domain here, folks. All S means for our purposes today is J, the imaginary number, times omega, the frequency of the input voltage. But before we talk more about that, let's rearrange a little by multiplying the top and the bottom by S times C so that our output voltage looks like this. Okay, now we're going to get our transfer function by bringing V in over to the other side to get V out divided by V in. Okay, I thought we were here for the minus 20 dB per decade thing. Hang tight. Usually when we look at a transfer function, we call it H of S or H of J omega. So in our case, H of S is equal to 1 divided by SRC plus 1. Or replacing S with J omega, H of J omega is equal to 1 divided by J omega RC plus 1. Let's talk about this J omega thing. Imaginary numbers are just math sprouting a third arm. No big deal. When we talk in terms of imaginary numbers, what we mean is that this has a magnitude and phase. What is magnitude and phase? If we were to draw this out on a plot, we have our real axis and our imaginary axis. 1 plus J omega RC would look like this. 1 on the real axis and omega RC on the imaginary. We can draw another line connecting these to get the magnitude. So the magnitude is just the square root of omega RC squared plus 1 squared. Phase is the angle this vector makes, so it is the arc tangent of omega RC divided by 1. So if we have the rectangular coordinates like 1 plus j omega RC, we can convert to magnitude and phase and vice versa. Another way to write out a transfer function is in terms of its magnitude and phase like this. Here you have the magnitude, and here you have the phase. You can do that because e to the j times a real number is only made up of phase and doesn't have magnitude, and because magnitude doesn't have a phase. Just like how a real number and imaginary number are separate, you can think of magnitude and phase as core elements that are totally different, that can't mix, and that can't be broken down any further. So the magnitude of h of j omega times e to the j times the phase of h of j omega is a perfectly legitimate way to write this out. So what is the magnitude and phase of our RC filter? Well, how do you find the magnitude and phase of 1 divided by 1 plus j omega RC? This isn't quite as straightforward as what you might want to initially do. On first instinct, to find the magnitude, maybe you'd want to take the magnitude of the top and the magnitude of the bottom and just divide them. You'd actually be right about that. But what about the phase? Let's pretend that the numerator is h a j omega and the denominator is h b j omega. If we were to convert this to the other form, it would look like this. So we can justify to ourselves that the magnitude is going to be the magnitude of the top divided by the magnitude of the bottom since, again, the magnitude of e to the j times a real number is just 1. The phase is a little different. What is e to the j times the phase of h a divided by e to the j times the phase of h b? We can reduce this to e to the j times the phase of h a minus the phase of h b. You can think of this like if we had x to the 6 divided by x cubed. To reduce this, you would do x to the 6 minus 3, which is x cubed. So the phase of h would be the phase of the numerator minus the phase of the denominator. Okay, RC filter, we're ready for you. 
In this case, HA is 1 and HB is 1 plus J omega RC. The magnitude of 1 is 1. The phase of 1 is 0. The magnitude of J omega RC plus 1 is the square root of omega RC squared plus 1. And the phase of J omega RC plus 1 is arctangent omega RC. Combine these with what we just learned and here's what we get. The magnitude is 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus omega RC squared. And the phase is negative arctangent of omega RC. Okay, let's unpack this a little. We'll try plugging some numbers into our magnitude and see what happens. Let's assume our resistance is 1 ohm and our capacitance is 1 farad, so that RC is equal to 1. What happens when the frequency is 0? The magnitude is 1. What about when the frequency is really big, like 10,000? We get a really small magnitude. This checks out because this is a low-pass RC filter, meaning as the frequency gets bigger, the magnitude of the output voltage should get smaller. Let's fill in a few more to see if we can find a pattern. 1 gives this, 2 gives this, 10 gives this, and so on. Now let's convert to decibels. How do we do that? Easy peasy formula. Decibels is equal to 20 times the log base 10 of the magnitude. Okay, so 1 is 0 dB, 1 over the square root of 2 is minus 3 dB, and so on. And boom, we've got our minus 20 dB per decade. From 10 to 100, there's a change in about minus 20 decibels, same as from 100 to 1000, and so on. Okay, we got minus 20 dB per decade. How do we get the minus 45 degrees per decade for phase? If you remember, the phase of a single pole system starts at zero, then a decade before the cutoff frequency, it starts to go down with a slope of minus 45 degrees per decade. It does this for two decades and then stops. I'm sure you all remember what an arc tangent plot looks like, but for all the normal people out there, it looks like this. In our case of the RC single pole filter, it's negative arc tangent omega RC, so it looks like this. If you zoom into the part that is one decade before and one decade after the cutoff frequency, in this case, it's at one hertz, then change the x-axis to be logarithmic, you can see that the slope of this is roughly minus 45 degrees per decade. If you're wondering about where minus 6 dB per octave comes from, let's fill in this chart and find out. If you're wondering what an octave is, so was I. Honestly, I thought it would be times 8 instead of times 10, like a decade is. You know, octave, octagon, octopus. Well, I tried 8. And it was about minus 18 dB per 8 tivs. Not sure what the word is for that. Actually, an octave is times 2. I don't know who thought of that, but okay. Let's confirm. When the frequency is 2, the magnitude is about minus 7 dB. When the frequency is 4, the magnitude is about minus 12 dB. When the frequency is 8, the magnitude is about minus 18 dB, and so on. We can start to see the minus 6 dB per octave as we get further away from the cutoff frequency. So there you have it. We have our minus 20 dB per decade, our minus 45 degrees per decade, and our minus 6 dB per octave explained. To learn more about analog filters, check out the other videos in our analog filter video series. You can also make your own filter using FilterLab, our active analog filter designer at filterlab.microchip.com. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.